Sunday together. Uh, also a special greeting for all of our dads and grandpas and uh, men who father uh, um, maybe kids that aren't theirs. Uh, happy Father's Day to you. Yay! <laughs> Just a couple of announcements first. Um, we have lots of fun scheduled for after uh, our service today. Uh, there will be some treats Please stay to eat. Uh, there are also going to be some activities. We've got kids' activities. We'll have some um, story time. There will be uh, tattoos, uh, temporary tattoos, which isn't just for kids, everyone. All of you can get them as well. Um, and uh, we got stickers and fun stuff. But one thing I really want to mention is uh, the Pride Rocks. Last Saturday on the 10th, uh, we had our third annual Pride Rocks event at Advent, and um, a beautiful rocks were painted with loving and affirming messages, and uh, we sealed them and coated them, and they are available on the table, and what we would like everyone to do is to take each family, take a rock, um, and put it somewhere in your path so that these messages can spread all over Cedarburg and Grafton and Port Washington and wherever we're living. Um, so that these messages can really bring some happiness and joy. So before you leave, make sure you take one from the table in the back. Um, I, uh, there are a ton of announcements um, on the last two pages of the bulletin, so I am not going to read all these, but there's an entire page of This Week at Advent and This Week at Faith. So please take a look. Um, the activities are certainly uh, open, so Advent members... Go join the intergenerational Bible study if you'd like. Um, and faith folks, come and join us as we package stuff for Strawberry Fest. we got all sorts of fun things going on. Um, speaking of, uh, Susie's going to come up and she's going to share an announcement about um, the Strawberry Circus that Advent is doing during the festival. And then Joe Dore, wherever you are, you're up next. Thank you, Pastor. Um, every year we all have to do that dreaded physical checkup with our doctors. And then when they're done, they give us all that data. Well, Advent had a secret checkup. And this is the data. And it says great things about Advent. And I'm sure they do. <laughs> but our checkup came, we looked at um, the hear hearing. And people heard Susan Hutton, Lisa Wagner, and Lily Line, and Pastor, and they all learned about Strawberry Fest and how important it was for Advent and for the structure of Advent and for the North Tower. You, your eyes are good because you saw the sign-up sheets. 
and the narthex, and you signed up well, but the most important part was your heart. And the evidence that your heart is good are these sign-up sheets. These are for Saturday morning, Saturday afternoon, Sunday morning, Saturday afternoon. It is complete. You are healthy. <laughs> so, a congregation that works together for a common cause is mighty. And you are mighty. And thank you so much. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Uh, I'm Joe Dorr. I'm a member at Faith, and I am here to talk with you about prison ministry. How many are familiar with the term <coughs> prison ministry? How many have ever in any way either supported or taken part in prison ministry? Oh, there are some really good. That's awesome. Um, I want to ask you one more question. How many of you have ever heard of Breaking the Chains Church? It's about half. That's pretty good, actually. Uh, Breaking the Chains Church is actually a ministry of the Greater Milwaukee Synod, and it's an organized church within the walls at Felmer's Cheney Correctional Center in Milwaukee. That particular prison is dedicated to men in the last few months of their prison terms, getting them ready for reintegration into society. And Take a break from that for a second. There has been research done that um, not just men, but people leaving prison in any way, shape, or form do better if they have had some sort of relationship with the church during their prison times. And so a few years ago, the Greater Milwaukee Synod dedicated itself to coming up with a way of uh, helping men and eventually also women uh, in their last months of uh, incarceration and helping them with their reintegration into society. And so they established Breaking the Chains Church. It actually is comprised of a part-time pastor, Pastor David Reby, and then there is a, a clerical person that provides some help for him. But all of the rest of that prison ministry is volunteers from churches within the Greater Milwaukee Synod and the way that they volunteer, there are several, but the two main ones is attending the worship service at Felmer's Cheney Institute on Saturday evenings and or attending a Bible study on Wednesday evenings. Um, we are looking for more people to do that. I've been doing that for a little over three years now, and it's just opened my eyes in a big way as to what... Um, People who have been incarcerated go through both leading up to and then after their leaving their prison terms. And the church has made a big difference for them. So I've been attending uh, Saturday night worship services occasionally, usually about every month or two. Uh, and there's a number of people throughout the synod who do that, but they're looking for more people to do that. And so uh, sometime very shortly in the next few weeks, they're going to be looking for new volunteers and so I'm here to actually propose that concept to you. Uh, if anyone liked, would like to talk about it, I'm going to offer two opportunities. One, since uh, Pastor Alexis said there's goodies afterwards, I'll hang around for that. But I'll, I'll kind of, if you look for a, a really tall, handsome, black-haired guy like me, oh no, wait. Um, <laughs> now, if you look for me, uh, I'll be happy to talk with you about it and answer some questions. But we're also going to hold just a kind of an informal Q&A session about this next Sunday after worship at Faith. So if you have any interest in becoming a volunteer for Breaking the Chains Church, see me today or please join us around 11 o'clock next Sunday morning. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. Pastor. While I invite the summer choir to come up to get ready for the invocation, um, I do just want to uh, say again, um, it's great that we are doing so many shared ministry things together. It's such a blessing, and um, uh, 
with the Strawberry Festival Faith folks, if you would love to participate, if it's always been your dream to make cotton candy, uh, or <laughs> snow cones, or um, you know, sell strawberry lemonade, uh, you're welcome to come. Even though uh, we have full rosters, um, you're welcome to join us if you'd like to. Um, and uh, Filmers Training is an important ministry, so thank you, Joe, for sharing about that. Um, we are going to uh, continue our worship. Our summer choir is going to uh, do uh, an invocation for us, and then we will lead into our Thanksgiving for baptism. <laughs> Oh God, you call us through the waters of baptism to be our authentic selves. You called us holy and set us on a path to manifest your revolution on earth. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. planted by streams, yielding fruit in due season, like Naaman the Syrian, washed clean in the waters of a foreign land, like the Samaritan woman who discovered wellsprings of eternal life in Jesus, and the Ethiopian eunuch baptized by Philip, like the women by the river outside the city gate who welcomed the gospel, like the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing through the city of God, we are joined in your amazing grace to live as one people, united in love. We praise you for the waters of life, for the streams and oceans, for lakes, and for estuaries.
and for the rain and snow. For all waters that give life to every living thing, from the waters above to the waters below, you made sacred our bond with water. Through the waters of the flood and the parting of the seas, you showed your promises to be true. And in case you couldn't see what was going on up here, make sure you check out our pictures of water that are up here with the flowers of all the different colors that are present. In the waters of baptism, you claimed us and called each of us by our true name. Through baptism into the body of Christ, you transformed our lives and made us whole. Send now your spirit to move in our midst and soak us with your great gifts of mercy, love, and grace. And let all God's people say, Amen. And let's uh, stand as you're able for our gathering hymn, All the Colors of the Rainbow.
grace of Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the wisdom of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Please join me in the prayer of the day. Let us pray. Loving Creator, you knit us together and created our innermost beings. You created us loved, worthy, and unique. You created us LGBTQIA+, BIPOC, neurodiverse, and physically diverse. Help us to find our wholeness in you and live into our divinely inspired purpose. Guide us to enfold your story of love. Amen. Good morning. If you would please join me in reading the psalm, um, I'll be reading the regular parts, and if you could join me on the bolded parts. O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down, and are acquainted with all my ways. You even pour our words on my tongue, O oh Lord. You know it completely. You hem me in, behind, and before, and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit, or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in shore, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and settle at the farthest limits of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me fast. For it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works, that I know very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Search me, O oh God, and know my heart. Test me and know my thoughts. sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus, and the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling, and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So Jesus told them this parable. Which of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my lost sheep. Just so, I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who need no repentance. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And you may be seated. Our Reconciling in Christ committees have been thinking and praying about this service for months now. And our theme, Created Whole, um, was something that we um, really responded strongly to. Because we live in a world that doesn't always affirm the wholeness and beauty of everyone. 
And so um, this parable was one that really spoke to me personally about this um, idea of being created whole in God. Now we hear lots um, of messages and sermons about the goodness of our God that goes out to retrieve and find the lost, the lonely, the forgotten, and the rejected. And our God is good, and our God does do that. And if you are feeling lost or lonely or rejected or, um, or forgotten, ours is a God that will come and find you and bring you and wrap his arms around you. But today, I don't want to talk about the lost and uh, the forgotten I want to talk about the 99. The 99 who uh, were doing maybe what they were supposed to. They didn't wander off. They were there together. And yet one was missing. The 100 was the goal. God wanted the flock to be united, to be one. And so, yes, ours is a God that will go and find the lost, but he is a God that brings the lost back into community, back to oneness, where we are all full, where we are all connected, when not one is missing. It's true in the prodigal son. The prodigal son goes away, and the brother is grumpy about it when he comes back. But the family was not whole until the son returned. And it goes back to the beginning. We were created whole and one in the garden. (coughs) Oneness, unity, harmony was always the goal, always what God wanted. So I'm going to use a little um, experiment. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to show you um, a little, I'm not doing a children's sermon, but uh, this is an activity. So I need, uh, Tom, I need you to come over here, please. And I need you to hold on to one side of this. And then, uh, Diane, can you actually come here? Because I'm going to need you to connect over to Wes. I need you to hold Tom's hand. Yeah. Okay. And I need you to hold Wes's hand. And Janet, can you sneak in over there and hold his? It doesn't matter what the size of our group is. Um, and you guys all hold hands there. And I'm actually going to come a little bit. Let's see. Ellie, I'm going to have you come actually this way. We're, gonna, we're not going to do everybody just because I don't. Actually, Esther, can you come and fill in the gap? Okay. Oh, Lord. Okay. All right. So, um, we are a people that need to be connected. Actually, sure, I'm going to need you to come in here, too. <laughs> My arms are long, but mm, I don't think they're that long. So, we are a people. Connect. Um, hold on to that. Other end. Thank you. We are a people who need to be connected. And it doesn't matter how many we are. When we are connected, beautiful things happen. Watch. But, yeah, hold it up. There we go. Now, um, Ellie, we don't like her shirt today. You do love her shirt. But she's not feeling so good, so she falls away from the group, and she lets go. And when one person feels lost or lonely or rejected... We are lesser for it. This is what it means to be part of the body of Christ and what it means to be connected. Thank you all for holding each other's hands. Thank you. (laughs) Friends, oneness was always the goal. And that is why reconciling in Christ is such an important project um, and ministry for us to be a part of. Because it affirms that not one person should feel lost or lonely or forgotten or rejected, particularly those in the LGBTQIA community. And so we have several people who are going to come up and who are going to share their stories about why being in a community that is connected 
um, that doesn't let anyone get lost or forgotten, why that matters. So first, I'm going to call up um, faith members, Sean and Laura Kinnanen, and they are going to share a little bit um, first. And, uh, and we're going to keep coming back to this Galatians reading, uh, because this is an important theolog theological point for Paul, um, is that um, we are one. We are one. So we're going to hear this a couple of times after Sean and Laura share a little bit. Ah, I'm making connection with the... Good morning, everybody. Good morning. What a wonderful day to have a service like this, huh? Right. Uh, please excuse my phone. It's just my notes. So. <laughs> yep. Um... My name is Sean. I've been a member of faith pretty much my whole life. Um, RIC means a lot to me and my family. Uh, my brother is openly gay. Um, and it's really important that the LGBT community knows that God loves them no matter what. Um, my family is like super religious, the whole family. And we've actually had, like, before my brother even came out, um, you know, some of my family members have said things about God and not accepting gay people or something along those lines and referencing Bible and stuff. And I can't imagine how he felt, you know, nobody knew that he was gay at that point, but I can't imagine how he felt, you know, hearing those things. And, and that kind of stuff, you know, might drive people away from the church. But um, this, you know, it's really important and uh, feeling welcomed, especially in a religious setting, will help open doors and uh, bring us closer to peace and equality for everybody. Um, and I'm proud to be a part of this church and proud that we are RIC. Hi, I'm Laura. I'm Sean Spice. Um, being an RIC is really important to me. I don't know much but I know numbers. And the reality is that our LGBTQIA2 spirit youth attempt suicide three and a half times more than heterosexual peers. And that is a lost person. So, you know, it's really important for, for me, for my children, to know God and to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. And I think that's important for everybody. So the reading today is from Galatians 3, 26 through 29. For in Christ Jesus you are all children of God through faith. As many of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male or female. For all of you are one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. Hi, I'm Diane Stoiber from Faith. Um, and I'm part of a big family. Um, I'm the oldest of nine children. I have six brothers and three sisters. Yes, we were Catholic. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I was Catholic, brought up Catholic, raised my children Catholic, was part of the Catholic Church most of my life and very, very active. Um, over time, of course, my family has grown. People got married. You know, there's nieces and nephews and grandkids. So if you picture, if you had a picture of my family, if they were all together and you saw them all there and you looked at them, you say, oh yeah, that looks like Diane's family. They look a lot like her. But now there's a few that have darker skin than me. How nice is that? Um, and and if you, and then but there's things you can't see in that picture. There's my my godson and nephew over there, and he's standing to a man that is his partner. They are a gay couple. You don't see that in the picture. Um, there's another part in that picture over here where there's my first husband father of my, our four children. He's standing next to a man, too. He is gay, and they are now legally married. We were married almost 25 years, and um, 
you know, after a time, I was like, you know, this is not working. We're not both not very happy. And so we said, you know, maybe we should get divorced. And we went to counselors and stuff like that. And um, I did not know that my husband was gay. I, I don't think he even knew. But the process took a while. We separated. We lived apart. We went to counselors. Um, he went to a counselor and discovered or accepted that he was gay. But he did not tell me or our children until a year and a half after our marriage was finalized. Our divorce was finalized, excuse me. He did not tell his own parents or his sister for another year after that. You know, so I'm thinking about this. I'm part of a church that, Catholic church, where women aren't even allowed to be priests, where, where, where my first husband was worked in the Catholic school system most of his career. Okay, he didn't tell me and the kids and his parents for a couple of years. He never told the Catholic Church he was gay. Never. Until and, and he and, and he was part of the Catholic school system until just a few years ago when he retired. So I'm thinking, why am I staying in a church that doesn't accept everyone? I love much of the Catholic Church. I love many of the people, many of the teachings. But I want to belong to a church where everyone is accepted, where my family is accepted, where my whole human family is accepted. So I looked for other churches, and I now belong to faith. And so I know that my grandkids can come to church with me. And if they talk about the papas, who's the papas? Well, that's my first husband and his partner. Those are the papas. I'm the grandma, those are the papas. <laughs> so here I am today celebrating, not just accepting or tolerating people of all different races and, and genders and mental and physical abilities. I'm celebrating RIC Sunday with Faith and with him. I'm so glad to be here. For in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. As many of you as were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves in Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male and female. For all of you are one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. So now you can listen to me. <laughs> so my name is Carol Feuerstein. I'm a member of Advent. And I want to share with you this morning why it's important to me to be part of a church that embraces LGBTQ people. And hopefully I won't cry too much, but I might. So I do it. It's important to me because I'm married to a woman. And many of you guys know that. You see us regularly. We've been married for eight years, together for 32. And we were married in this church. Because this is where we feel loved and supported. Just like the rest of you feel loved and supported and a part of this family. So you might be asking yourself, if she only wants to be like the rest of us, what's the big deal about being RIC? And why should we fly that gay black flag? So the reason we need to be RIC and the reason we need to advertise that we support LGBTQ people is that so many places are not safe. For LGBTQ people. It's kind of like what Diane was saying about her photo and her family. If I'm out in my workplace and I'm honest about who I am and who I love, I could lose my job. Or maybe I just won't get the promotion. Or my ideas won't be heard. If I'm honest about who I am in my family, my family of origin might turn their back on me. And if I'm honest about who I am in my church family, my church family could turn their back on me too. And sadly, for some people, they could even lose their lives. <coughs> so if we are a safe place that values and supports LGBTQ people, we need to boldly proclaim that. We need to say it and say it out loud so people can hear it. Because that's not what we hear. We hear you're not welcome. You're not like us. You're an other. You're doing something wrong. 
So most of you can walk into the church anywhere and you feel welcome. You feel like you belong. Many LGBTQ people, if they walk into a church at all, they walk in with their defenses up. They're prepared to be ostracized, rebuked, ignored. Too many LGBTQ people have had really traumatic experiences surrounding the church. And they're afraid. And they come back, they want to re-engage, and they have this PTSD response. It's painful, it's scary, it's not something you want to go through. So we need to boldly proclaim that we are welcoming. So church, my faith family, all of you guys, needs to be a place where my family and I feel safe. Safe where we can be ourselves. Safe where we can show who we love. Safe to be exactly as God made us. Because only when all of God's children are welcomed into God's family are we truly living and being Christ's love of the world. And that is what I want. So now if you could all join me, we're going to read that verse together. The one I've been reading for you all. For in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. As many of you as were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male and female. For all of you are one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. Thank you to everybody who has shared their stories. And Pastor Alexis and I decided we would do this kind of shared together. But I was so excited about how what she wanted to share about the parable of the lost sheep. I'm like, I want to hear you preach about that. <laughs> and so she's like, well, how about if you sum up? And so I thought, okay, I can do that. But I wanted to just point out something. Uh, did you notice what happens when we share our stories? There's something very powerful about this. When we share our stories with one another, our stories connect us. And it's interesting how each story is unique, just like each person is unique and individual. But each story also cares, com carries common threads that create community. We find something that connects us, that connects us together, and we know another person more, and we can know ourselves more. It seeks out and creates community. And the other thing is that we cannot share our story alone. We need each other. And there's always a risk in that. When someone may be, how do I want to share my story? Am I okay to do that? There's a risk. But there's also a great promise, a promise of community, and how wonderful when we can do that, when we can have a space to share our stories with one another and hear our stories. The other is that our unity is not found in sameness. We are not all the same. Each person is unique and different, but rather our unity is found in the love that seeks us out, that gathers us, and that makes us whole, that makes us complete. There's a great initiative that happens there of God's great love that gathers us together. And the other thought is a question of always the question, whose stories aren't being heard? Who aren't we listening to? <coughs> And how might we welcome those stories and learn from those stories? There's always an ever-growing question that is before us. And the great gift of all of this and the grace that is part of it, the promise that we gather around and, and celebrate, is that the love that makes us one, church, it's already been given. It is God's gift to you. It is God's grace. It is God's love for you. And it is yours share. Amen. Amen. We're going to respond in singing, uh, and so the hymn is, God, we gather as your people, and I invite you to stand as you're able as we sing together. <laughs>
join together in confessing our faith using some words that we have shared with us from the reconciling works that we're drawing on for this service today. Let us profess our faith. We believe in one God, the architect and guardian, who in the beginning breathed life into the void, sprouting all that is seen and unseen. We believe in Jesus Christ, that in order to reconcile the cosmos, this God sent a piece of God's own self to be born human as kin to us all, and who at the hands of political tyranny was killed. He rose again to new life in love to return the world to God. We believe in the Holy Spirit, who is one with the Creator and Savior. She is our guide in wisdom. She pours her spirit into apostles, prophets, teachers, healers, and listeners. We believe in the uniting of all Christians into the one body of Christ, and we believe in our return to God at the end. Amen. And you may be seated for the prayers. Please join me in the prayers of intercession. Trusting in God's extraordinary love, let us come near to the Holy One in prayer. We pray for our pastors, deacons, bishops, and church leaders, that they may lead us to be a loving and welcoming community in Jesus Christ. We give thanks for reconciling works and all of our reconciling in Christ partners. We pray that the whole church may someday be a refuge for all of our LGBTQIA plus siblings. Merciful God, send wholeness to our church. We pray for change, for the dismantling of systems rooted in oppression and discrimination. Make us bold in our proclamation that the lives, loves, and gifts of lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, intersex, asexual, aromantic, black, brown, indigenous, incarcerated, disabled, and migrant people matter to you, and so they matter to all of us. Manifest in both word and deed. Teach us to see and celebrate the stunning beauty in all you have made. Merciful God, send all this to your people. We pray for the sustainability of our earthly home. Guide us to care for creation. Be mindful of waste, carbon emissions, and the impact of these sins on poor and marginalized communities. Merciful God, send wholeness to our earth. We pray for our siblings around the world. We pray that governments enact laws that protect and defend the poor, marginalized, and persecuted. We pray that your hand of justice intercedes for us, and we pray for all fathers who love and protect their families. Merciful God, send wholeness to the nations. We pray for those that have chaos swirling around them. We pray for those that have been told that they are less than, wrong, or an outcast for who they are. We pray that all of us find our true peace and wholeness of ourselves in you. We pray for those that are victims of violence at the hands of homophobia, transphobia, racism, and ableism. We pray for your mercy, love, and healing to care for them. Merciful God, Send wholeness to your children. We pray that our faith community and its ministries uplift and care for all of your diverse created beings. We pray that we work towards justice and peace in our own family and community. Merciful God, send wholeness to us. For what else does this assembly pray? Hear the prayers that are spoken aloud or in the silence of our hearts at this time. Send wholeness to your people, merciful God. We pray for our LGBTQIA plus saints, all those who have gone before us in the fight for justice, freedom, and peace, those that have boldly stood as themselves, showing the substance you created, even when the world told them to hide. Merciful God, receive our, our saints in peace. Receive the prayers of your children, merciful God, and hold us forever in your steadfast love. Through Jesus Christ, our holy wisdom. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. I invite you to stand and show a sign of peace with your neighbors. Thank you. 
but I just want to say a little bit about offering. Um, today, any loose offering um, that is, we're not going to collect it, but there is an offering box that is on the table. It has a sign that says worship offering. Um, it, Sandy is uh, standing next to it there. She's got, woo, Vanna White. That's good. Thank you, Sandy. <laughs> any offerings that have uh, faith uh, envelopes or Advent envelopes will obviously go to those churches, but any loose offerings collected today are going to go to Reconciling Works. Reconciling Works is the organization that uh, that has uh, supports the Reconciling in Christ program. It is what allows us um, some of the resources that we have to um, to do ministries like this. Our liturgy today was provided by Reconciling Works. Um, by um, commissioned by a pastor um, named A.J. Hausman. Um, it's an important organization, and so all offerings that are given loosely will go to support Reconciling Works, and you can leave that now, or you can do it on your way out. Um, but now our choir is going to sing God of Many Faces. <laughs> Oh, my God. 
Let us pray. God of all creation, you have given us life, love, compassion, and hope. We offer the gifts of our very beings to your holy calling. Strengthen us through these gifts to be the arms of mercy and justice for the world. And let the people say amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for you sent your child to be the light and life for the world. Through him you showed us how to love and be loved, how to enact justice and pray for peace. And so, with the glorious company of the saints, with earth and sea and stars, with the choirs of angels and all the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending intersection of the waters above and the waters below, you created life out of the void. We thank you for the gift of creation. Through Miriam and Moses, you lead your people from oppression into liberation. We thank you for your gift of liberation. You sent the prophets to warn us to love, not hate, and guide us to your faithfulness in your promises. We thank you for your promise to love. In the intersection of the divine and humanity, you made us whole through Jesus Christ. We thank you for the gift of Christ. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. With this holy sustenance, we are made new creatures in the covenant of your Son, Jesus Christ. Together we remember his life, death, and resurrection in in this meal and await a new and unending life in you. Come, Lord Jesus. Please send your spirit to this place, to this meal, and to your church. May her life-giving wisdom be upon us now, renewed and nourished in your holy promises to be the creators of justice, wholeness, and freedom. Come, Holy Spirit. With the birds of the air and fish of the sea, with the flora and fauna, with saints of all time and space, we praise you always, O God, blessed Trinity, to the very end of the age. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come, you who are weak and weary. Come, you who are persecuted and abandoned. Come, you who are cast to the margins. Come, you who search for love and wholeness. Come, if you are LGBTQIA+, and an ally. Come as you are, for yours is the kingdom of God. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And some instructions, there will be two stations, one here under the shelter and one over in this area, Uh, and you can come to the station nearest to you. Um, There is a gluten-free host available at this station. Um, If you need that, you can come and request that. 
there's also wine and grape juice, and i believe that we'll practice and intention today, so you can receive the host and dip that into the cup that you would like. and there's no ushers with us. come whichever close to you. holy chaos. no ushers, so just come to whatever one is closest to you. we'll trust you with that.
Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his peace. Amen. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, God of mercy and love. We thank you for the nourishment that sustains our living spirits. We ask that you guide us and bless us on our journey as we strive for peace, justice, and wholeness for all. In the sacred name of the Redeemer, we pray. Amen. I'm going to invite you to stand as you are able for our sending song, Sing a New World into Being. the benediction, I just want to say uh, a thank you to all of the members of the Reconciling in Christ teams from Advent and from Faith for putting the service together, for decorating, for baking the treats, for the beautiful altar decorations, for all of it. So let's just give them a round of applause. They worked really hard on the service today. Don't forget to stay to eat all of the things that they made. And um, don't forget to take a rock on your way out before you leave. There are stories for kids, tattoos, all sorts of fun things. Feel free to get your picture taken in the Made in God's Image frame. All sorts of fun as we stick around. All right, receive now this blessing. 
May the God of creation bless you and claim you. May the Savior give you peace and wholeness. And may Spirit guide you and lead you to mercy and justice. Amen. Go now in wholeness to love and deliver the justice of God. Okay, we will. Thanks be to God.